Welcome to Taisha's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you two recipes using horsetails. So horsetails is a type of fern and they look like this. So this plant has two parts, one is a fertile stem and one is a sterile stem. So what I'm going to show you how to eat today is the fertile stem. So the rest of the year you only see pretty much the sterile stem. If you ever run across these in the woods or whatever, try to remember where it was and go around April to see if these fertile stem grow there. If you ever find them, then you can pick them up and eat them. So here's a little clip that I went to pick these. So here we have quite a lot of horse tails. It's a little forest path near my house and I come here quite often for a walk. I was very happy to find these. If you find one horse tail, you'll find around that area a lot of horse tail because often they share the same roots. And so I'm just gonna go pick these up. So these are some horse tails. These are fully grown. Here in the top part, they hold the spores and these have been fully grown and already given out the spores. So they don't have quite that strong taste. And here, as you can see, the spores are still in. You can open this up and then you'll find here inside, this green color comes from the spores. If you flick this, you see a little smoke coming out. And as you can see, here are all the spores. So I'm going to pick these guys and bring them home and prepare them. So I picked for about 10 minutes now and got a bag full. This is going to be quite enough for me. So depending on where you live, this might be very difficult to find. And I'm sorry if that's the case, but you can still watch this video and see what you can make out of these just in case someday you find these. Then let's get started. Here I have the horse tails. And then like I said, I'm gonna make two dishes out of these. One tsukudani with soy sauce and sugar, and tamago toji or with beaten egg, then dashi powder, soy sauce, sugar, and an egg. Then let's first clean these guys. So the first thing we need to do with these horse tails is to prepare them. To do that, we need to take out these so-called hakama or the pants of the horse tails. So we need to take all these out. It's a little bit tedious, but you need to do this. That's not very pleasant in your mouth. So I'm just gonna have to take these out. And often inside here, there are some dirt in there. So if you have the hakama here, then even if you wash them, the dirt doesn't go out. So also for that reason, we need to take them out. Then let's do it for all of them. And also if you have like ones that are a little bit damaged or like a little darker, then uh, you might want to throw these away. So all the hakama or pants of the horse tail is peeled off. I'm just gonna quickly wash this with water and wash out any dirt. And as you see the color of this, this color is from the spores. So some of these are a bit too long, so I'm gonna cut these into bite-sized lengths. So we're just gonna bite-sized lengths. It's kinda like this. So in a boiling water, I'm gonna put this in right here. And then we're gonna wait until this comes to boil again. And once this has come to boil again, I'm gonna turn the heat to low. And look how beautiful the color this is. This is the color of the spring for me. We're gonna cook like this for about a minute. So one minute has passed, I'm gonna drain this. I'm just gonna quickly wash it again with cold water. So this is finished preparing the horse tail. Now this is ready to be made for two dishes. Now I'm gonna separate these into two parts. 
one for the tsukudani and one for the beaten egg. So let's try to measure this, how much that is. That is about 70 gram. So we're gonna first make the tsukudani. So in a pot I'm gonna put half of this, this is about 70 gram, like we measured, and then turn the heat to medium. And then in this we're gonna put in the soy sauce and the sugar, with about the same amount each. So I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of soy sauce, also about same amount of sugar, which is two tablespoons. And two. If you prefer this sweeter, then you can also add in a little more sugar into it. That's a preference thing. So you want to cook like this for about 5 to 10 minutes until the water vaporizes. The water is thickened and vaporized, so this is finished for tsukudani. So I'm gonna put this on the plate. Then, this is finished for tsukudani. Let's make the tamagotoji or the horse tail with beaten egg. First, I'm gonna make the sauce. In a pot, I'm gonna put in 3 tablespoons of water. And then in this, I'm going to put in 1 tablespoon of sugar and 2 tablespoons of soy sauce. And to this, I'm gonna add in half a package of dashi powder. This is about 5 grams. I'm gonna put in a quarter teaspoon or about the half of this package. Then in here I'm going to put in the tsukushi, or the horsetail. And then I'm going to bring this to boil. Turn the heat to medium. And while we're waiting on this to boil, I'm going to beat the egg. So once this has come to boil, I'm going to turn the heat to low. I'm going to let this cook for about 2 minutes or so, so that the horsetail will soak in the juice. So about two minutes has passed, I'm gonna put in the egg. And just gonna give it a little light swirl. And then turn the heat off. And I'm gonna put in the lid. And let this cook for about 30 seconds or so on its own heat. And then, this is finished. It's okay that it's got a little bit of runny egg. You don't wanna overcook the egg. And let's put this on a plate. And I'm gonna put a little bit of scallion just as a garnish on the top. So this is finished for two dishes with the horsetail. Let's eat. Okay, let's eat. Itadakimasu. Okay, let's start with the tamago toshi or the, with the beaten egg. So the color may not seem so appetizing because of the spore. They have like a little bit, this green color with the egg may not seem that particularly appetizing, but the taste is delicious. So itadakimasu. Mmm. This is really spring flavor. Mmm. 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 So to explain the flavor of this is very difficult because this is distinctly different from any other vegetable. So if I had to compare this, so I would compare this to the tip of the green asparagus. Make it like five times bitterer. Kind of similar to that taste. Like 30, 40 years ago, a lot of people I would assume have picked this and ate it at home. But nowadays a lot of people live in the city and their lives have become rather modern. I would assume that not many people in Japan know the flavor of this. But for me, when I was living in Japan, I always tried to find this. Because this bitterness is just for me, really spring flavor. So this may be an acquired taste. It's kind of hard to say if it's delicious. It doesn't have that like a really strong flavor, but it's just kind of for me nostalgic flavor. So let's have the tsukudani. For most people who don't know about this, this probably doesn't look particularly appetizing. But this is really delicious. Itadakimasu. Mmm. 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 So this just brings me so much memories from my childhood. So I used to go picking these horse tails with my mother every spring. So there was this small river near our house and we always went there to pick these. And we always picked like a bag full of these. And of course, this is quite salty. You don't want to eat this on its own. 
the sukudan is meant to be eaten with rice. Mmm. Mmm. This is just really spring flavor. So my spring starts when I eat this. Mmm. Oh, that was totally delicious. So this, I'm not gonna eat the whole thing today. This is way too salty for that. So I'm gonna enjoy this in the next couple days. So that was the video for two recipe of horsetail. Like I said, this is an acquired taste. You don't have to make this. This is not particularly typical Japanese food, but this is something that's probably very, very different from the rest of the world, where we eat not the cultivated food or cultivated vegetable, the vegetable or the plants from the wild. There are also some plants that we eat that is grown in the wild, and this is one of them. I would assume it's not very easy to find these, but if you ever find these, I would urge you to pick them up and kind of give it a try. It's got a very different taste, and supposedly it's got a lot of good nutrients that is actually necessary for this season to make your body strong for this season and that's also another reason why we try to eat the food for that season because the food of that season have the nutrient that you need for this time of the year so i hope this video was interesting for you i hope it was something new for you and if you like what you saw please hit the like button and i look forward to see you in the next video bye